Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Icana, Timon, Arminus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go, and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, 
and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus speaks today in the Gospel of John, telling us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there were many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back? take you to myself, so that where I am, am, you also may be. Jesus goes on to tell his followers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we recognize that that can summarize our mission statement in a real way of our faith. To get to that place that has been prepared for us. The many, the many houses that are in my Father's dwelling place that are in my Father's house. For us to get there, Jesus is the way to get there. He is the truth that will get us there. And He is the life now and for all eternity for us. But he did not leave it up to us to figure out how to get there on our own. He left us the church, his living presence in his apostles and their successors down through the ages, and the disciples, followers of Jesus from the very beginning until this very day. So he speaks to us today that it is in the church that he speaks and guides and nourishes and strengthens and protects us. Throughout the season of Easter, we have been listening to the beautiful words of St. Luke in the Acts of the Apostles that tell us the story of the first beginnings of this church of ours how they met the challenges and needs of the disciples from the very beginning, sharing everything in common, taking care of the needs of each other, being the very presence of Christ to each other in word and in deed. And today we hear about a need that grew up 
the Hellenists and the Hebrews, the two factions of the church. The Hebrews, the traditional people of Israel who followed the disciples of Jesus and became his disciples. And the Greeks, the Hellenists, the non-Jewish people who were taking uh, the faith as well and beginning to follow Jesus. And they were complaining of a need. They were being neglected in the daily distribution of the food. So that led the apostles to call forth and ordain the first class of deacons, seven deacons chosen and by the imposition of hands ordained to the diaconate to serve the needs of God's people. So the church takes its first giant step in the proclamation of gospel in the taking care of the needs of those who uh, needed the extra support and the help through the ministry of the diaconate, which begins today. And down through the ages, the church, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which we come upon the apostles at Pentecost, and which to this day, to this very day, inspires and leads the bishops, the successors of the apostles, teachers of the faith in providing the means necessary to follow Jesus the way, the truth, and the life through its proclamation of sacred scripture, through its celebration of the sacraments, through its teaching of revealed truth under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to providing for the needs of the most vulnerable among us, for helping us to cope with all of life's situations and to be strengthened in our faith. For as the church acts, so Jesus acts. And right now, my friends, in this difficult moments that we are experiencing in our world, the church is here. We are here. And even though we're not physically present to each other, we have a bond in the church as brothers and sisters in faith that can be never broken, never can be broken. And even in this moment, we are finding comfort in the presence of Christ among us, in his word. And through the live streaming that we're able to do, thanks to the technologies of this day in which we live, we are at least able to participate um, in, in our spiritual presence to the sacrament of Christ's presence. It's nowhere near as good, obviously. And to be present here is the, the way in which Jesus ordained the sacrament to take place. But we know that that's not possible yet close, not yet, but even in th thanks to this technology that the church is able to be close to us, and we are able to be close to each other in the community of faith through the gift of this technology, so that we can at least be virtually united in prayer. Some people, you know, have been saying, oh, this is a good thing, we don't know. That means we can just, you know, be at home and see this. Well, it's a temporary solution. It's not as good. And it will never take the place of being here as the body of Christ, to receive the body of Christ. But it's a way at least we can be united and to reach out to each other temporarily until we can be united once again here in this beautiful house of worship around the table of the Lord. And so we thank God today, just as in the time of the Acts of the Apostles, down through the ages until this very day, we find strength, support, encouragement, nourishment in the church's sacraments, in Jesus himself reaching out to us and allowing us to prayerfully say those words and to live those words, do not let your hearts be troubled, have faith in God, faith in me, for I am the way, truth and the life that leads ultimately to our place in the kingdom of heaven. So today we rejoice in that continuous gift 
And so many gifts have been given to us by the Lord Jesus himself. Today is Mother's Day, as we know, uh, when we honor in a special way our mothers, both living and deceased. And thank God for that gift that he provides us. And it is our mothers and our fathers who introduced us after baptism into this community of faith and church to recognize the power and the presence of Jesus here. So today we honor our mothers and we thank them for instilling in us so many good things, but especially the gift of faith that is ours. We traditionally honor today also, and we will do that uh, today at the end of Mass, the mother of all of us, the Blessed Mother, given to us by Jesus in the very moment of his passion and death from the cross. Behold your mother. We know that she is a mother to the whole world. She is a mother to all of us. And like our mothers, all of our mothers, in the body of the church, she is praying from heaven with us and for us, her spiritual children, especially in this moment of need as we struggle to get through this time of challenge. Another beautiful and great gift given to us by God. So today, as we honor our mothers, and perhaps we're not able to do that in person right now, but we do it in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our minds, and in our prayers. And let us today, at the end of Mass today, as we crown the beautiful image of Mary here in the church, in our hearts, thank God for the gift that she is to all of us, given to us by her divine Son, to be a patroness, a protector, an intercessor for us. We praise always that we follow her divine Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and ultimately the life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and through all ages, God from God, light from light, to God and through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As people called by God, a chosen race, a loyal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. For all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, may God's grace enable them to lead with integrity, protecting life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for any who are struggling to believe and those whose faith is weak. May Christ speak to their troubled hearts and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been welcomed into the church this Easter season, may the Holy Spirit continue to form them as living stones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and especially today, for members enrolled in the Purgatorial Memorial Society, Jack and Joan Monahan, and for the people of the parish. May he who has prepared a place for them welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those petitions we hold deep in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know our needs before we ask. Please hear and answer our prayers this day. According to your will, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, 
overcome with passive joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make your heart an eternal offering to you, so that in the affect the heavy penalty of your elect, especially the most important part of the day, the man of God, blessed the justice of God, the blessed the apostles and glory of martyrs, and with all the saints of the constant intercession in the person who relies on the heaven here. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with the Lord, our Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm your faith and charity in the Philippine Church of the Lord, with your servant, Pope Francis, and the Lady of Nature, the Lord of the Bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have made for you all. Please be pleased to listen to the prayers of the Father, whom you have supported before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, God that you will serve the Holy Spirit and scatter the sin of the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who have made it to you, and to the apostles of this life, give and eliminate them to your kingdom. They are the hope which are forever the fullness of your glory. Throw Christ our Lord into the home, with the Son of the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the lifting of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only the sake of earth and my soul is shall be. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those who have communed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the prayer to combat the glory of the pandemic. Most merciful and triune God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust. For you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors. Give understanding to scientists. 
endow caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one. Welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. It has always been uh, our tradition here to do the crowning of the Blessed Mother uh, on Mother's Day. So today, we will do that now to honor our Blessed Mother, given to us by Jesus as Mother of the World, to be our Mother and our Intercessor as we honor her. Wow. 